there is always a lot of debate around this subject, right? When should you take down your Christmas decorations? But on the other hand, there's still some conversations about how you should be disposing of them. In particular, we're talking about a Christmas tree. Now take a look at this, and I'm thinking that this weighs in on the category of what not to do, right? Who does this? Uh, for so many different reasons, I'm thinking that this is just flat wrong, right? Someone could be below. Probably not just wise in any capacity. So that all said, this happened in the Marina District of San Francisco. Five story tall building. So to clear up some confusion, in case you do have some confusion, Robert Reed, one of my favorite people from Recology, is here to join us and talk about what to do, what not to do about a Christmas tree. So Robert, what do you think? Should you take your tree and push it out of your window if you are like, I don't know, five stories high? Good idea, bad idea, Robert. You know, that, that is not in the um, instructions in the city protocol in San Francisco for recycling your Christmas tree, that's for sure. So what is in the uh, city's code of regulations plus, of course, the social code of what to do and what not to do? Well, we want we collect 500 tons of Christmas trees during the first two weeks of January. It's a big part of the recycling effort in San Francisco to keep all those trees out of the landfill. So uh, the best thing to do, of course, is to remove the ornaments and any other decorations on the tree and take it out to the curb the night before your regularly scheduled collection day. And um, and then we'll come by the on the morning of your pickup and we have a dedicated fleet of trucks uh, that'll go down the assigned routes and pick up those trees and we'll take them down to the transfer station and we will then move them off to uh, one of our composting facilities and we'll grind them up and we'll turn them into mulch. And that mulch can be very beneficial for the city, correct? It can help with landscaping, make sure that it plays a part in the drought by keeping areas protected well for drainage, correct? Yeah, uh, pine trees have a uh, resin in them, which is a natural deterrent to weeds. So a lot of this mulch is used in city parks, uh, around picnic areas, and uh, also around commercial buildings uh, on landscaping projects. And like you said, uh, applying mulch on the ground helps hold moisture in the soil, and we all know how important that is here in California, having experienced these dry periods. We are looking at video of Christmas trees, but again, probably it's worth mentioning that if you have, for example, any kind of ornaments left on the tree, that's not good, right? Yeah, you want a, you want a naked tree. You want to make sure that all any tinsel or ornaments are removed, there, there's no lights on it. And if it's over six feet tall, please just cut it once, cut it in half, and then mm -hmm. put it out next to your bins. And then our, our crews will come along and pick it up and make sure that it gets recycled. What about as far as wreaths? What about garland? So long as it's real, correct? Yeah, um, it's gotta be real. I mean, if it's a wreath, then uh, it may have some metal components to it mm -hmm. and it'd be good to remove those so that uh you know where we're looking to pick up and recycle is and turn into mulch of course is the the bombs and the arms of any um, pine trees and you wouldn't want the metal that would be a part of garland that keeps it connected or a reef connected to go through the chipper right that could be dangerous no no that would not be good and we wouldn't want that to wind up in the in the mulch uh, at a at a park or um, uh, on some landscaping project that wouldn't be good but you know it's this is a great program people actively participate in it it's for the first 2 weeks of January so between now and January 14th We'll be having trucks, you know, pick up these trees. So please put it out at the curb with your bins the night before your scheduled collection day. I was going to say that's key because, if, of course, if you miss garbage day and then the tree is out there, it could just kind of take off, right? Well, we want to make sure it gets collected as part of this program on your scheduled day. You know, we, we're driving down every street in San Francisco on on the regular 
scheduled days to pick up trees and that's how you make sure that it's handled properly that it doesn't go to a landfill that it does get turned into mulch that it it helps you know go back to the earth and it and is used for the right reasons what about as far as like a stand robert i mean does that need to be taken off um you know sometimes the stands are just the plywood stuck together but normally that's with the nail in the bottom right well, there's different types of stands, and even the one you're describing is going to have some pretty heavy gauge nails in it that are long, and those, of course, are made out of steel. And we wouldn't want to have uh, something like that in in the chipper or in the mulch. You know, I mean, somebody could step on a nail, and we would never want that to happen. So, take a hammer and knock that thing off. You know, and then of course, there's a lot of cardboard boxes that people have this time of the year, and so. It's very good to flatten those cardboard boxes and get them into your recycling bin. Then they get made into new cardboard boxes, uh, which of course we need a lot of those for all the online purchases that we have going on these days. And it's important, remember, to take out of those boxes. If you don't flatten them, you need to go through and make sure that the styrofoam is not there and some of the odds and ends that sometimes comes in our online packages, right? Yes, it, it's very important to, you know, just flatten them. And like you said, if there's something inside, you got to take it out. I like to tear them up a little bit and so that they're not so boxy when you put them in the recycle bin and that provides additional room for your bottles and cans. And then in regards to separation, are you finding that people are doing a good job separating things? You know, different counties, San Francisco's one way, each county seems to have a different way of recycling, but it is still important to make sure that you're putting things in the right spot, right? Absolutely. Uh, recycling is tremendously important. Uh, recycling one ton of paper saves 17 trees. So we want to make sure we don't let any cardboard or any paper of any form go to the landfill. We need trees now than we've ever needed trees. And paper mills, you know, want this recycled paper. It's very much in demand. I mean, recycled paper and recycled cardboard gets used to make new cardboard boxes to shoot, ship um, food to grocery stores and medicine to pharmacies and, and supplies to hospitals. And that's all very important, in, especially in these times. And it's also really important, this is some uh, a pet peeve of mine in regards to compost. I mean, put your, put your stuff into a compost bin, right? Your food scraps and that kind of stuff, it really does make a huge difference, right? I'm, you know, I'm really glad you brought up composting because uh, San Francisco pioneered curbside food scrap collection for composting 25 years ago. And now 150 cities across the country are following San Francisco's lead. And a new state law um, is requiring cities and counties up and down the state um, to also initiate food scrap collection programs to, to keep compostable materials out of landfills. And so um, there's a lot of discussion about this and a lot of plans uh, in the works and underway we, we all are encouraged to compost our eggshells, coffee grounds, banana peels, anything that came from a farm ought to be turned into compost and go back onto a farm. It helps farms save water and it helps farms grow healthy food. I always think it's bananas when people don't understand not to have a play on words, but that said, it drives me crazy when people don't realize how much they could be saving in their actual garbage by composting. Like you reduce your refuse exponentially, right? Yeah, in communities up and down the state, um, garbage cans are getting smaller because people are composting, they're getting a green bin and they're composting their food scraps. And then of course, any sticks and leaves from their yards or gardens, and then people are recycling. Uh, we're really into recycling here in California. And so when you, you know, when it comes to your actual landfill bin, about all that's left is some, you know, film plastic and, and small pieces of low quality plastic. And we're even encouraging people to avoid plastic when shopping, you know, try to buy loose fruits and vegetables. Uh, if you have to buy packaged foods, try to buy foods that are in glass 
or paper or metal, all free materials which are easily recycled. Love, I, I love the glass. You and I have talked before about, you know, bringing actual items to a restaurant and have them pack into the takeaway as opposed to you know, all of the plastic stuff that you might get from a restaurant. I know that some cities have put in compostable takeout items, but not everybody's there yet. Well, I think, you know, people who, who work in restaurants and also people who are doing the checkout at grocery stores, they're very appreciative when people bring a canvas carry bag and, and so they don't have to hand out a plastic bag. And you can certainly do that at a restaurant. If you're gonna to go to get takeout food, you can bring uh, your own your own tote bag so that then you can decline a plastic bag. You know, people only use plastic bags for a few minutes. And unfortunately they create so many problems in our, in our environment. Um, you know, we all know about plastic bags impacting, negatively impacting birds and fish and whales in the ocean. And so there's really a movement, uh, an international movement and, and, and also in California to uh, decline plastics and, and, and particularly low quality plastics, film or flimsy plastics, uh, you know, to really to be part of the solution. Exactly. The dirty words of the single use plastic, like my daughters hate me because I don't ever buy a plastic bottle of anything and they think it's horrible. So, but I don't care. I could talk to you about recycling forever, Robert. I always appreciate your time. So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for inviting me on. It was a blast. It's good to see you all again. Very good to see you too. Happy New Year to you.